three, two, Is one. It gonna work? Hey, Is what's going on? We are here with special, 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 special sauce it's guests. Yay! Yeah. And um, I'm guessing you guys maybe have uh, exhausted the depth of your sex game. <laughs> Well, we are, this is, I hope not. <laughs> well, and, welcome uh, to we Marriage Quickie. We're yeah. here at Marriage Quickie. Um, so we got a little morning. support. We brought in some backup. Yeah. And okay. if you haven't been to our Casey. Marriage Quickie live, I'm Brittany Fentress and this is Simon Fentress and we have Leslie <laughs> and, and Joshua. Joshua. Yes. And yeah, do you want to just go ahead and, and, and jump in and talk about what you're, what, what you guys do, what your offering is? Just do it up front. Yeah, Leslie, hit it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, <laughs> um, let's see. I'm a sex and intimacy coach. I do um, tantric body work for couples and individuals. I teach classes. I um, recently got into doing more shamanic one on one work with people, um, doing journey work. So that's been really, really satisfying and beautiful. And with classes, I've been, um, I've been, bringing on this wild creature over here, Joshua, to play, <laughs> come and add his magic into the scene. And it's been uh, really beautiful to co-create. So I basically just like um, creating spaces where people get to be more of who they are and just tear down all the shit that's in the way because we've got a lot of that programming and a lot of, the, a lot of fears, a lot of traumas uh, in our way. And I just love seeing people be their full self. Yeah, do you want to jump in? Like, you have actually have an event this evening that you two are co-hosting, right? The Honey That's Hive. That's right. That's right. Well, we um, we recently ran a weekend for couples. Uh, it was a tantra weekend that was really geared toward couples and deepening into tantric union and really going going deeper and deeper as a couple. And one of the things that we witnessed happening is when couples get together, like the content aside. When couples get together and like witness each other in their own in their struggles there's just this radical sense of not aloneness that emerges mm -hmm. for couples mm -hmm. there's this whole new level of like permission for our struggles and like resource in that like uh and so after that weekend having witnessed that really specific container for couples we're like <laughs> we've got to create something that's a more of an ongoing community for couples because i haven't really seen it i haven't really mm -hmm. seen that happening and so we're like, let's do something virtual. Let's create a virtual community of couples where we can get people together to practice together. It's really practice driven. It's not didactically driven. It's really driven by practice and connection between couples. That includes not only, so this, the program we're doing is gonna include two all, all hive calls, all communities calls. It's called the Honey Hive. Um, and it's every two everybody calls and one gender specific call each month. So I'll host a call for the men. Leslie will host a call for the women once a month as well and then couples will also be paired up with another couple to do ongoing like weekly um, check-in calls and just have community support and mirroring and reflection and we're really excited about the format we're really excited about like challenging um, the community with different practices and to go and, and and play with and come back to their to their um, partnerships and their and these calls to share about what's going on and, um, and tonight we have a free a taste of honey uh, from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. It's on Zoom. We've got some room. We've got 22 couples um, on, on so far. And we've got room for another, another 20, 20 or so couples um, as far as Zoom will allow us. So we're really looking forward to seeing who rolls out. And, uh, and thanks so much for having us on to chat about it. So, so I'm just curious about like the Genesis story about how you got got into the practice how like what was your initiate initiatory experience or curiosity oh, i got a good one of those okay fantastic <laughs> um i would say uh i got into all of this because of my first ever ayahuasca ceremony about 11 years ago in costa rica when i was i was fresh off the boat knew nothing about any of this stuff and uh i had an experience during that ceremony of some kind of uh, deeply sexual, deeply devotional energy moving through my body. That was you know, some kind of Kundalini awakening experience that um, pretty much uh, was the most eye-opening experience ever. And I pretty much realized like, oh, there's way more to this 
than we think, like so much more. And started uh, studying everything I could about Tantra, started studying body work, started studying psychology and how can I, how can I work with this energy? How can I work with people to help them unlock it? So what, what were the first things that you realized or like the big distinctions that you came to in, into being like called to, to like dive deeper into it? What were like the, the initial ahas that were like, yeah, this is the thing. Well, I came from a pretty like kind of traditional Catholic background and I was raised in the Midwest. And so I always had the, the sex is bad, sex is wrong. You gotta, you know, kind of like, if it feels good, it's probably not good for you kind of thing. And to come to a, a body of teaching, a body of work that is really about celebrating sexuality and sexual energy and, and, and putting it toward a greater purpose in your life or a greater purpose within your relationship um, was super eye-opening for me. And it w- I was suddenly like, oh my God, I can be spiritual and sexual at the same time. And, and this is, you know, this is a way forward. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I was, I just had this, um, when you were speaking into that, because I came back, I, not Catholic, but, um, a pretty hardcore evangelical full four square church, um, beliefs as a child and raised that way. And, and yeah, yeah, I had the ring that was like, I'm saving myself for God. Funny is I have think I have no idea what happened to that ring. And also I did not save myself. So like, Oh, lost the ring, lost my virginity. Um, <clears throat> But it was like, oh, it it was just like this shush thing. And like, I don't master, you know, you don't touch yourself. Like, I remember like, it's okay if I have sex. I just can't touch myself. Like, oh. that's not an okay thing. Like, that's a bad thing. Um, and just thinking of all those things I made up in my head. And when I got into more of a spiritual practice and like found that I can have both at the same time. Um, there's a lot of forgiveness and grace in God or a universe or source, however you think of it, there's forgiveness and grace there. And for me to tap into that, um, but for us as like what we're offering to couples and like why we're here in the world is like, there's a reason for your union. Like there, you know, people keep saying you're better together. Like, well, why? Well, when you're in union and in a sacred union and you're married and when you come together in bed and sexually, like my I've had like orgasms with him that I like feel like God's come and tapped into my heart and soul. And like, I've never experienced that before, but it was the moment we came into one, like, Oh, that's what this is. Like we both have this North star. We both have this purpose. And like, there was, there's been many moments like, Whoa, I just saw something. It was like either like a Hawk or like an ISIS or literally white light coming through and so for us, like, that's like why we're doing what we're doing. So we know like the power together is, there's a purpose for this. She was, she was drawn to me uh, uh, partially by my kink. Cause I didn't know that like events were, were like, um, were, uh, you know, if you're going to go to events and it shows other people, I didn't realize that. So like, Facebook is like, yes, yeah. Shibori tie yeah, up sh- and Shibori tea, and like, oh, tea, you know, in the city. And she's like, oh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, 50 shades of gray <laughs> well action done. over there. He didn't know. This is. I didn't know. I, was, I didn't know that I was advertising that sort of. Well, yeah. I was just kind of st- stalking him at the time. Well, he had asked for my number. I was like, "Well, who is this guy?" Yeah. And, yes. Well, anyways. And then she's like, when I got together, and I was like, "Oh, can I tie you up?" And here's a little. Here's my little go bag. We can open up with the goodies. And she's like, "What's going on here?" No, we're like, "Yes, awesome. please." Yeah, she's like, "Yeah, yes, please. yes, please." She's like, "What? Mm. Are you gonna come some?" time like today tomorrow like what's what's happening it was a very different experience. <laughs> <laughs> like what's going on here <laughs> no but it was a different experience so like for you i think um we've had a couple um that we know that went was your event in december in the beginning of december that you had held it was on, yeah. on valentine's weekend oh um, yeah yeah i think we had we have, we have a friend that, <clears throat> that went to your event so yes Beautiful. they were like awesome <laughs> It was so rich. All right, so yeah. so Josh, Joshua, jump in. Like, what's, well, what, how did you get into this? I think you guys are nailing it. Like, I think there's a really essential piece of um, our couplehood as uh, uh, the most profound awakening practice that any of us could could embrace, right? And it turns out that the more like radically intimate and deeply committed, and and like the more you like allow yourself to completely surrender into 
the intimacy of your of your partnership like the bigger and wilder the orgasms get the greater the pleasure becomes the richer the whole experience becomes and i can never see the back of my head right unless i have somebody who's there to take a look at it and be like here's what's going on back there bro <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and right. so like that's so much yeah. what relationship is about like w- we triangulate to god together like with only one eye i can see the field but i see no depth right mm. with two eyes i can triangulate to things and see where they are in the field and i think mm-hmm. that's just a fundamental metaphor for relationship when we're deeply committed to walking a path together, to embracing our relationship as a, an awakening practice. Um, mm-hmm. And we get to um, expand our range in both directions, our capacity to hold pain, our capacity to hold the trauma that arises when we're in intimacy together and we're deepening into trust together, and our capacity to hold and experience the profound pleasure that becomes available as we, as we um, soften into our, our nervous systems and really increase their capacity. How did, how did you get sparked into this path or, or, or doing what you do? You know, it's really funny. I came to Tantra from a, you know, from a very different perspective, which makes it a lot of fun because I don't have, I don't have traditional training in Tantra per se, but I was a martial arts um, you know, a practitioner and instructor for many years in the Shaolin Kung Fu tradition and Bagua. So really working with polarity, the yin and yang, like embodied yin and yang and what that looks and feels like. And um, I have a master's degree in somatic psychotherapy. Um, I've been teaching nonviolent communication. I've rebranded it. My brand is um, no bullshit communication. So master your bullshit is where I've been training from um, to teach people the exquisite art of, of intimate communication. And so, and it just being an embodied creature and having walked my own journey, having spent a lot of time like celibate and like on this like spiritual path and in my twenties, no less, like, um, you know, really uh, afraid of my sexuality on, on, a, on a fundamental level. Um, and then finally finding the, the path of merging with my sexuality as a profound practice of self-awareness and, and connection and um, opening and unlocking my, my sacral chakra and all the creative energy that's, that's stored in there. Um, and having discovered the, the ecstatic dance community and really like finding my body in a whole, at a whole new level and finding mm. my body in relationship to other bodies at a whole new level. So all these things um, and my own sort of personal path of, of non-dual um, meditation practice, um, sitting in Zazen for, for 10 years before finding, um, <clears throat> before finding Vipassana, sitting Vipassana for the last 15 years. And and uh, uh, all of these things make it uh, just kind of converge. And so when I hang out with Tantra people, we're like geeking out on things from a totally different perspective. And it's just so much fun. It's so complimentary and rich, right? Because I don't have their practices and they don't have my practices. So Leslie and I get together and we like, we, we just bounce off of each other like with so easily. And we, we complement each other in terms of how we're coming at this and framing things and the experiential embodiment practices that we bring to the table to be able to help people have a direct experience of what we're talking about instead of just think about it and imagine mm-hmm. how good it is right yeah there's a lot of different ways to get to source right once you get to yeah. source it kind of doesn't matter how you got there it's like you're just mm-hmm. you're just <laughs> and i just want to i just want to show my little link is it backwards there you go oh my no, God. I, no, no no it's right okay. it's backwards to you that's oh, right okay. we can put it in the link we'll put it in the, we'll, we'll put, put it, it in the, we'll put yeah, i just want to put it here because every it, time like you stick it in the links like still. Facebook deprioritizes like the moment you put a link in your in your in your post Facebook t- sent, tends to like to take you out to take you what? out of the yeah yeah you like, didn't you didn't buy into us so we're gonna take you out yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just so I'm that just was gonna bit.ly. hold this here for a little while. Like, like, honey like, hive bit.ly, <laughs> bit.ly slash honey hive taster. taster. We H, actually will put it in our yeah. email too. We like, can so drop it in. It's uh, bit Leslie and a honey hive taster. No, yeah. bit Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the way that I uh, got into Tantra was like, like uh, insecurity. Um, cause my partner could not have an orgasm and I made that, that was something wrong with me. Right. And so I got really curious about what could be possible for me. And so I, he practically got a 
PhD. Let me see how many books he has in our closet. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I um my first my first foray was this book by Penny Slinger um and another I don't know what the guy's name is called sexual sexual secrets and I was like what you can do this and energy channeling and I'm like like what and my mind was kind of blown so I was like okay and that's how I you know came into it from just a deep insecurity from what I saw was a problem with my partner not you know, having an orgasm and I found out how normal that is and but that began you know my search into it and I actually um, reached out to Penny Slinger recently and we're gonna have we're gonna have a, a, a talk so yeah yes. so <laughs> it's bringing all all this all this thing is just bringing us bringing us all closer but it was amazing because I actually haven't had any tantra background at all and and then but when I look into it I'm like oh but we actually like naturally do it. Like after once we came together and his, like he was doing his, he, he was practicing it with me and I didn't yes. have, I, I was running, I was running the energy <laughs> and I could feel, I could feel it. And we, once we started talking, I'm like, yeah, this, this is how I'm feeling when I have sex with you is a totally different experience. I get this feeling, especially the first time I felt the, a white light come completely through my body. And I saw him, um, it was, it was like this moment where I said, we need to go out, have sex outside. Like I'm getting told in my head or my heart is like, go outside, have sex. And we found this spot and this is not me. Like I'm an analyzer and not spontaneous and like, no. And so we found this grassy spot. I'm like, there, I went there. And this is overlooking, the, old, uh, overlooking the water, very the visible to people. Yes. If any, like super visible, I had no <laughs> idea. Give it, we're giving, we're giving the yacht a little show. They're like, and but right. like it was the t it was the experience that that first time that white light came through and i literally i saw him as my soul partner like it was very very clear because i also back up i was having doubts about simon i was like i don't know like I'm literally asking god is this the thing for me like is this the way and this white light came in is like boom you know this person like you know him on a soul level and then you've done the, this before the, yeah, like I've done this before. before. <laughs> and the message was, I found you. Like, I found you again. Like, this is like, I found you again. Like, I found you. And that just the whole thing kept running through my head was, I found you, I found you. And, but then we started talking about like, because when we started dating and having sex, it was like intense. And he's like always putting his hand on my bed, like, just breathe here. And it was like, just instructing me to do it. And now like, like you remember, yeah, I literally said two days ago, like, you remember when you used to like hold like spots on my body and tell me to breathe into this space and like that changed everything. So if one partner it knows has been had his experience, mm -hmm. it changes the entire game. And I had like, and I didn't even know at the time that's what was happening is like now when we talk about it, we go I'm like, oh, well now it's normal <laughs> like because now and then i've had an a kund kundalini experience so now it's like i'm bringing my energy into it and i breathe into him and it becomes like this natural thing so people who, who are watching like go to their the honey hive taster mm -hmm. tonight because you're gonna get something that you have never experienced in your life it's profound and, yeah. and the thing that's so wild about this is that you know yeah, you can read books and, and kind of be inspired and, and you can you can hear about it, but it's, it's really like, it's sort of a transmission. You kind of have to just like get the mojo somehow. You just gotta like get the flavor of it, like get the taste mm -hmm. of it. There's no way that I'm gonna be able to explain to people exactly how to have the kind of like totally transcendent orgasms that like, that we've all been, you know, just swimming in. It's like, you can't exactly like teach that per se, but it's sort of like, it's more of like a flavor. It's more of an atmosphere. You know, like, oh, oh, that's the direction we're going with this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's, just, it, yeah, ahead. pop in. Go ahead. I just want to say that, like, there's no better time than right now while you are maybe like literally stuck in your house with your partner. There's no better time to practice like more exquisite communication and radical honesty because all those things that you've been able to kind of put on the back burner for a, for a while and like kind of ignore while you each go to your work lives and whatever else you can do to distract yourself from the challenges mm -hmm. in your relationship, they're just right in front of you and they're not gonna go anywhere. Um, but you get to go through them now. You have an opportunity with greater spaciousness and greater sort of, um, and just being stuck together yeah, and you get you get to you get the creativity, right? You have yeah. the time when you have time, you get creativity, you get like culture, mm -hmm. right? So it's like yeah, it's like how do you if you after you've had the so, vanilla sex a couple of times, you're like, man, I 
don't know. Like yeah. so, like let's get the gourmet stuff going. Let's yeah, let's let's get, get the more elements colors on our happening. Palette, you know, there's so many layers, <laughs> and and Leslie and I break this down into like four basic categories. There's for our like practical tantra, right? Which which tantra just means like we include everything. You know, we're not just trying to get to God and like transcend the world. We're trying to bring God back down into every sensation and every moment, every moment of pain and pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. Bringing that awareness in and saying yes to whatever is showing up as God in this moment, right? My partner and my tantric consort is the embodiment of the beloved. And whatever they're bringing to me is a gift. And it's something that I'm meant to look at and see. And it's part of my awakening process. It's not mm -hmm. their shit. There's no such thing as their shit in a tantric partnership right? Mm. There's our process that we are mm. now given an opportunity to attend to. And so we want to attend to that with the greatest sense, sense of resource possible. Well, you get and to so dissolve the, the duality and get into the oh, unity yeah. consciousness, mm -hmm. right? And get into the field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so Leslie and I break it down. Like there's, there's four basic layers. There's our embodiment practices, how we come back to our bodies after living in a culture that has totally pulled us out of our bodies and up into our minds. Mm -hmm. um you know so and that can be as simple mind. as like what actually feels good for me what actually do i like what do i want how do i communicate that to my partner like what actually mm -hmm. is feeling like oh yeah i feel like so many people just put up with sort of like mediocre touch and then they kind of just you know like a lot of the couples that i work with in my practice like the the typical story goes like guy wants more sex woman kind of wants less sex but actually she wants like higher quality sex actually she wants yes mm -hmm. she wants <laughs> him to tune into her body and sense her flows and her and her energy and like listen to her cues it's like but he just doesn't know how to do that right it's like there's there's some just very basic like wow how how do we like really connect deeply on this physical dimension and and like go sink into it and see where it takes you do you find that women tend to they don't know that they can just ask or say mm -hmm. like, this is what I want. Like, this is the thing. Like I've learned with him. That's what he just wants me. He just wants me to tell him like, this is what I want right now. Like yeah. he'll take sex anytime, but it's like, for me, I'm like, that's not what I want right now. Like <laughs> literally it would be just like, I just want you to bite me on my back. Like just bite my back. I want you yeah. to like, there's like, it's almost like acupuncture. Like you just <laughs> put like your teeth into my like, and he'll just bite my neck or my back. And sometimes it doesn't go any other way, anywhere. Other times I melt and I'm like, okay, yeah, like yeah. I, whatever yeah. tension was there, I released it. And it's, I, it's, yeah. and, and it's also getting be, beyond, I, I've, I've had a lot of conversations with women about like, oh, like, I'm not getting this because I want this. I'm like, okay, are you asking and having the courage to start asking and it for being okay that it might not be the thing, but like still celebrating that there was a really sincere try and then let's get creative and like move on yes. and to just i love that celebrate the try That's it. <laughs> and like and and this gets into the second piece for us which is communication right right <clears throat> this is essential currency and in, in intimacy and in relationship and right now we're seeing like there's two sides of this there's women who are like finding their voice and speaking their desires in a in a world that has never said that your voice matters and your desires matter right mm -hmm. so we're working with these huge collective sort of uh, energies right unsilencing the women and for men learning how to listen like listening and like not taking her um, expression of desire or her feedback as like you're doing something wrong but as like mm -hmm. here's how i want it and men being like open instead of like contracting in shame and and like being mad because we did something wrong but being like oh like that's how i that's how i can better serve your pleasure like yes you know yeah. so it's this like women speaking men listening kind of paradigm and so when we cultivate these like skills of doing both in our relationship of like speaking our true honesty what we really want and listening deeply to our to this other human being who's expressing their 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 experience to us then mm. radical things start to unravel and shift and open and relationship yeah so that's a two and then you said you had four so it yeah, was embodiment communication and then what's the what are the next two um and then there's awakening practice there's there's the breath work there's the energy work that you guys that you were you were speaking to there's the ways that we frame our relationship as this like pat walk with god that mm -hmm. like that our partner is the beloved and that we can in, in that we can practice eye gazing and breath work and presence work that brings us into the presence of the divine in our in our partnership 
right? And that's a cultivation, that's a mindfulness practice, that's an awakening practice. So deepening our, our sort of sense of framework around what relationship is, we're not just like two like, like, like mammals trying to get our needs met, like on one level, yes. And then what we're actually like gods, like mm -hmm. playing out a divine dance in the most beautiful story ever written. And that's us like merging with the divine in each other's presence again and again and again, right? Playing hide and seek with God together in this relationship. Um, so we can build that body of practice within our relationship and come back to that again and again and again. Um, and then the fourth is like our, our vision for relationships. So many people are just like sitting there, like, like yes. just reacting to what's showing up in our relationship like being like, okay, this is all I get. Instead of being like, wait a second, like what kind of a relationship do I want? Mm -hmm. What what kind of like a home do I want to live in relationally? And I'm going to design, I'm going to architect the shit out of that and like, you know, get an engineer on this thing and, and like put a blueprint down together as partners. Like this is the world that we want. This is the relationship that we want. And then start experimenting and actually concretely doing things that are going to embody that kind of relationship instead of just settling. I love watching stuff. Leslie lick her lips while you're talking. Like, yes. <laughs> I yeah. do too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Speaking my language. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tap into the honey hive here. Mm -hmm. That's right. I really, I, I really love because we've been, we've gotten really deep recently. I love that. So I, I didn't know if you cut, if you knew that I was catching you doing that. But I just thought, pray everyone. Well done. Uh, I really love what you just said because I'm um, this whole time we've been talking. I've been like blueprint is like hit my head like blueprint, blueprint, blueprint. But we've actually been we're like rebranding and re like we're like what we're going more of a radical movement. We're just, like you know what we're done with the soft stuff like you need god <laughs> like we're gonna go radical here like we're gonna take a bigger stand for people and but it's we the, keep it's thinking the vision about piece. it's, it's the vision piece. It's, it's, it's having it's having the vision but it's not that you get like oh we're just, what is our vision create it's like connecting back to source to connecting to god you already have a blueprint created before you even came here it's tapping into your own innate wisdom of what God's blueprint for you was in this marriage. Just like the reason Just why, remembering. Remembering. why you came together. Yeah. And like, if you're not doing communication and if you're not embodying yourself, you're not doing the steps you're doing, it's really difficult right. to tap into your purpose. Right. Each yeah. of those is going to be a limiter, right? Each of those yeah. elements of, of being able to just navigate the physical elements of it, the communication, any parts of those games that not are not on point, like you could have a great vision, but then, then the communication, the touch, the connection, those parts aren't there. And so it's not going to be what it could be, right? So there's like those, those elements, those pillars of, of building that. It's like whatever level you are in those is going to be, you know, the magnitude of your experience for sure. Yeah. Well, and just that there's nowhere to hide in a sacred relationship. Like there's no, like none of these can kind of just slide by the wayside or, oh, well, we'll get to that like later on. I mean, you cannot hide. Like when mm -hmm. we're at this level of, of individual, you know, just, just being in our own practice around our own awakening stuff, our own, um, you know, dredging up our fears, our blocks, like you cannot hide. You cannot like skip over any steps or pretend that it's all okay if it's not okay. I mean. What, mm -hmm. what you, I really appreciate what you're saying, Brittany, about like that, that, Hey, this is really about God in a way. Cause it's like, it's really about the oneness and you know, mm -hmm. what do we have to do to find like everything that gets in the way, everything mm -hmm. and, and just see it for what it is. And like, Oh, wow. It's this, it's this piece that hasn't gotten put into place yet. Oh, it's like this whole I feel like the whole world right now is like we like took like the thousand piece puzzle and just like dumped it out on the table yeah. and we're like oh, you know but there is oneness in it right and like yes. to, to not like like to not fight with it or struggle with the with the differences but kind of like to to see what the lesson is to learn from it to like okay right this is where we need to put this this is where I need to align myself with the other or with the whole um, and relationship is just like such a microcosm of the macrocosm. There's there's this um, piece when I was doing uh, the Margot Nan sky dancing uh, tantra, and there was like this phrase that say like this is the courageous path to to God. Like this is kind of like the real fast way when you when you start to delve into the and unpack the se sexual potential and that creativity. Like all the shit is gonna be like 
is buried like really thinly under there and it's all going to come up all the blocks and traumas is just going to be like erupt out of oh yeah uh, of that well, spot it's connected yes. to your root chakra which is holds our foundation and then it's connected yeah, to your right. solar which is your willpower and yeah. like i don't want to let go and so yeah those three lower chakras so it's going to get it's you know you're you're playing with something really really powerful and also things could like erupt and blow up in a way and and really it's like very essential to have people around you that know what the fuck's going on. Tools, yeah, like, because all of our all of our deepest traumas were installed in the most intimate bonds, right? Mm -hmm. And so the moment we actually start bonding with another human being and we start trust like having to trust another human being, we start to see all the places where we hold on, where mm -hmm, we don't yeah. trust, where we're terrified of actually leaning in to someone, right? Mm -hmm. And so this path is such a path of like, of you don't even have to go hunting, just go love. And all those things are just gonna come right to the surface. And guess what? Like, we don't get to attack them. We don't get to destroy them. We don't get to get rid of them. We learn to love them. We learn mm -hmm. to love them right as they are. We learn to love them in ourselves and love them in our partner and have just a tremendous compassion and crystal clarity in their presence, right? We that's the journey of, of Tantra is learning to love everything that comes into this field of experience and softening mm -hmm. and relaxing and breathing into whatever shows up, whether it's, you know, the, you know, uh, COVID Armageddon, or it's the argument about the thing that is never really about the thing. Never um, <laughs> no it's not it's about like the experience like zero to eight trauma yeah mom dad told me this Every i time. believe this this happened so i make that about this about me like yeah yeah we, we've just gone through a huge well we're actually still in it in transformational le leadership yeah. training um which is the main that's one of the biggest points about um but when you say lean in like I, we have i have a coach and she and i describe like this is what's happening she's like i want you to lean into that lean because you know if it's because i get to talk to her about like what's happening with simon and i it's like coaches get coaches everybody has <gasps> oprah has three coaches mm -hmm. oprah yeah. has three personal coaches yeah she but like the whole thing is you get to lean into that when you said i'm like yes because every time i pull back and i get scared it vibrate it just gets bigger and bigger and worse and worse and i have to di like i'm digging a bigger hole so yeah. it's like when i lean in even though i'm so scared that's when you have a breakthrough. That's when yeah. you get really intimate and you get right. past the fear. It's so exciting to see us just like have some kind of massive breakdown because like this- You know, a breakthrough you know, is coming. Breakthrough, yeah. more light's gonna shed in, more possibility for our life is possible. I just want a presence that we're like way over the time yeah. that we said yeah. we're out. <laughs> and I'd love to get to wrap up, com you know, comments from you. If you want to like kick it off, Leslie. Yes, thank you, Joshua. <laughs> Bitly, yeah. honey hive taster. Bit.ly slash honey good. hive taster. Yeah. Get it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. You know, I we guess, can even just put it in the comments too. So yeah, we'll won't. drop it in. I just, I just, it's just fun. I've never done it's this fun. before. And it was like my idea today. So I'm rocking it. I love it. With it. Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead. I guess just what's coming for me is that I think that there's a real misconception in Tantra that it's all about like how to have massive squirting orgasms or like, you know, how to have the most blissful, whatever, you know, and kind of there, there is a lot of, in the Tantra world about this kind of like, yay, 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 get more of the goods, you know? And, and it's just like, it, it actually, I think it really sells, it really sells it short because there is like, it's, it's like you said, when you have those breakdowns, then, you know, the breakthroughs are coming. It's like, I don't want to leave behind any part of my humanity. I don't want to leave behind any of those parts of me that feel unlovable or ashamed or, you know, it's like, I want to bring all that into the light. And so what I love so much about this work is that it's about like getting down in there and like really, really sensing what's there and really like really making space within your relationship, within yourself to, to hold it, to love it, to, to like okay let it all like digest and transmute and like burn through and like having the the courage to do that so i think that um you know when people are like oh yeah i'm going to a tantra workshop like they think it's all about like the love and light and the, and, like, the good times but then 
it's really like wow it goes as deep as you want to go and like all these levels of like sinking down in and like really unearthing all the good stuff so thank you for bringing that up that's a bit that's always been like a thing in my head like oh like when people are like i'm gonna say my marriage is i'm like oh which and like who are like but then we simon always asks like what teacher are you going to like who's your teacher because there's a big difference like yeah. teachers there's a difference in teachers so i'm really happy you brought that up because yeah. you guys are yeah. um bringing us something that is crucial and needed and it's making you're going deeper with people it's not just yes the amazing orgasms yeah <laughs> So those oh, are it's just hard too. to sell it's we're hard to sell like <laughs> yeah we're gonna bring you to the depth of your suffering and your deepest traumas yeah. together give us money and let's go you know hey, let's go. You ready? <laughs> how fun yeah. yeah why not you know yeah <laughs> are you ready to face your darkest shit right like, just swipe right here oh uh, yeah <laughs> got you but, you know that's pretty much what day, it is yeah we're, we're practicing dying and if you want to have the most fucking outrageous orgasm of your life learn how to die learn how to die into your experience learn how to surrender your sense of identity completely and allow whatever is arising to take its fullest blossoming sort of richness and well it, it, you know like i think there's there is the element of the that you have to say like the you know seducing people into their awakening right and so that's kind of like at the core of it of, of just like seducing people into their like sort of a base primal sexual vibe and seducing ah. them into a deeper relationship with themselves other people and in higher states of being where you know, only the trojan the, horse it's like tantric sex is like just to get you in the door and then we're like by the way there's all this to deal with I'm like Whoa! <laughs> that's pretty much what happened with our leadership training they're like you get this and then we got in and they're like oh shit like we're it's going to a relationship like you get this but by the way that's also yeah our relationships like <laughs> totally. how satisfying you, is it huh how satisfying is it when somebody just calls you on your shit and they just like just nail you to the spot and like with love but like hey leslie you're being like this i need you to see this I'm like oh mm. just like you know that like knife in the yep. your gut you're like oh yeah oh and i deserve it and like thank right. you right well yeah and but the the, the but the delivery system is love, right? So it's like yeah. that, that, that. When that, it comes from That love, container yeah. of, of, <laughs> of the pill that you're taking is wrapped yeah. in. Yeah. In, in yeah. That, yes. That's gotta be. And the more, the less you're othering that person, like that's your shit. Like you're, mm -hmm. you have to see this when you're doing that. It's really hard to receive, right? It's really hard right. to take in. You're in separation, right? But if you're like, wow, like this is what I'm noticing. This is the impact it's having on me. Are you willing to look at this? What What's there for you to own? Like curiosity, like love, like an honest acknowledgement and vulnerability about the impact of this, of your beloved's actions on you, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we can sit there on our pillow and fool ourselves all day long in meditation and think that we're, you know, we've, we've got something handled. But the fact is that if I don't do my dishes, then who's going to do my dishes in my relationship? Mm -hmm. You know, like... There's no hiding the fact that I didn't do my dishes. Got to handle your dishes, you know. Got to handle your dishes, and as long as we're, <laughs> as long as we're handling those dishes, you know, and, and we're supporting each other, right? We're like, yeah, like, yeah. Um, then we get that, we get that feedback, and it's so essential. Mm -hmm. Which is why, like, we are like turning a corner, like, as a species, into really embracing relationship as the spiritual practice, like the like pinnacle of spiritual practice up until now has been like the monastic aloneness mm -hmm. right we don't have like really salient models and a, and a big sort of you know body of practice of people walking the path of tantric union but you're you're right that people can make a, up some kind of bullshit story about who they're being but once you have somebody actually in your zone, knowing who you are, then we're like, mm, yeah, I see you like showing up as totally fronting and fake and bullshit. <laughs> How would you like to like actually show up in a way that's authentic? Yeah. Mm. But what I love, um, we could wrap it up to like what's going on right now, which is really interesting that you with what's going on right now, people are like, oh, you're freaking out. But if you look at it, we were in such like separation. We were like, I'm on my own. I work by myself. Like we just, you know, come together. But we're being forced, especially in California and some other places to be together. We're being forced to be unified. We're being forced to see 
that even worldwide, how close and tight knit we are, like we are not how, separate. How, con how connected we are. We are so together in this world that you don't even realize it, like how connected yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. And if we take, like, I really believe that this uh, virus is, and that we're coming into a whole different vibration, a whole different awakening in the world. Oh, yeah. Like we're going to come out of this, like, oh no, we're connected. Right. Yeah. We're never who been was, separate. Who, who was thinking like a month and a half ago that the president be, be, be uh, signing checks for us all. Like that was even in the, even in the the sphere of possibilities and now now whole different things are shifting so it's evolving. really the blessing in this like what's the blessing and even just today like you get to see how connected you are now what do you want to do about it like is there a gap what's there a gap now let's do let's go there let's lean in lean in while you were we've been we've been given the gift of time for some yes. of us just yeah. like now like we're just at nine nine minutes now ish right <laughs> Yeah. Thank, thanks for hanging in there, Leslie. You know, you know, uh, let's, uh, we'll let you two Ooh, go. We, we almost didn't quite make it. There was not, not enough material here. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah, just, I'd right. love to wrap. I'd love yep. to wrap by just acknowledging that we are collectively facing something that is has a lot of unknowns. And I was doing some math the other day, and the math goes something like don't know plus zero breaths equals fucking panic, right? And don't know plus three breaths, three deep breaths equals curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. know plus 10 deep breaths equals a sense of wonder. Like how much can we bring our breath into all that we don't know and all that we have no control over at this moment? How can we allow that to inform the choices that we do make about what we do have some modicum of control over? And so I'd yeah. love to invite us together just to take three deep breaths together because there's just mm -hmm. medicine in that. And anybody who's watching right now, just join us and just in through the nose and out through the mouth. I remember the first time I heard about breath work, I was like, that sounds like a lot of shit. <laughs> it works. I'm already and, breathing. And, like, what and, is the, and, what's the and deal? Yeah, like, what's the deal? But, like, really um, getting, getting, um, <laughs> like, taking that thing that's an automatic function all the time, like, that, with, like, it's much more challenging to lower our heart rates and everything, but, like, we can hijack our our breath at any moment and change our state for sure. The unconscious conscious. Just be be it's in. Be, it's actually scientific. Be, there be are in nerve. the divine and like ten breaths away. Yeah. There so. are nerve endings. Like when you breathe shallowly and you're only bringing everything in your chest. I actually had a client who came in with heart pain, like a lot. It's like my nobody. Like my doctors keep telling me to relax. Like and like she had heart pain all the time. And I didn't know that after until I did our healing, like, does your heart hurt? Cause my heart was like pain. And, um, but she's, you, when you breathe from your, just your, you know, here, there's these nerve endings uh, on our lungs that if they only get the breath there, they put us into flight or fright. Like they put us into panic. But when you breathe down into your belly and the bottom of our lungs get that nerve gets touched and like activated, that puts us into calm. Like it actually is scientifically or biologically, that's how it works you're calming yourself. But when you keep it up and you keep it tight, you're just freaking yourself out. Yeah. Um, so it's like when people are like, oh, breath work doesn't work. I'm like, actually there's nerve endings. <laughs> it does work. Yeah. And the more you do it when you're, I like to say strike when the iron is cold. Practice mm -hmm. when you're not fucking losing your shit. Yes. And just practice throughout the day. Set an alarm for like three times a day for you to take five deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth when you're not in a state of limbic activation. And the mm -hmm. more you more you sort of carve that path in your consciousness, then the more available it becomes in the moments that you really need it when you're when you're having that like story start to sort of spin out of control and your and your cortisol levels start spiking and you're freaking out because you're getting super activated and triggered, right? Yeah. So we're gonna do a part two, I think. I'm feeling that <laughs> I'm feeling that there. We get yeah, to that well, we've, got, we've got the honey <laughs> hot taster. 
<laughs> the taster is starting tonight at 5.30 to 7.30. Everybody can jump in and get some free practices. There's going to be some great stuff. Even if you just come for tonight yeah. and take, yeah. take that with yeah. you into the, into the quarantine, you're going to be so much better off, I promise. And then the actual three-month journey starts um, uh, the first April. Monday in April. Um, so we'll have some time between tonight. April 6th? Yeah, April 6th, yeah. exactly. Um, good maths. Um, it's only because I know my kids were supposed to go back to school that day. I <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the um that's the program and we'd love to jump back on and have some more conversation with you too between now awesome. and the start of the program thanks so much yeah, that was that was lovely. Love, love you guys. guys thanks so much yeah. for your gift <laughs> well, thank you, well. thank you. Yeah.